because I didn't see him um, at the start. Thomas, are you uh, online? Yes, I'm online. Can oh, you excellent. Me? Pathy, you can turn off your um, video now if you'd like to have a rest from the, from the rest of the audience. So Thomas, welcome, welcome to our session. Um, Thomas, has, uh, Thomas Jackal has directed the regional programs on the commercialization of biopesticides in Southeast Asia and was chief technical advisor for GIZ's regional program, ASEAN Sustainable Agri-Food Systems, which promoted regulatory harmonization of biocontrol agents. He's now, um, he joined since 2017, the International Rice Research Institute, IRI, um, who were actually on in our last session. So um, it's a welcome back to them. Uh, Thomas, you have the floor. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Alison, for the nice introduction and thank you for the invitation. Hello, everybody. Uh, uh, I will uh, make it hopefully short uh, and introduce you a little bit to the regulatory situation in, in ASEAN. Uh, next slide, please. Just a short overview. Uh, so I, I will uh, briefly talk about the regulatory landscape regarding biopesticide biocontrol agents in uh, ASEAN member states, um, at least uh, the situation until 2016. Uh, that was the time uh, until I was uh, working on that on that topic, but uh, it hasn't changed much uh, much in the meantime, so, so to say. Um, and then uh, I will give you a one slide preview, actually, of um, an activity uh, of the so-called SCDF project, uh, which is called uh, ASEA Pesticide Residue Mitigation through Promotion of Biopesticides and Enhancement of Trade Opportunities, which is. Um, uh, uh, a project that has started this year and I will continue until next year. And um, uh, at the end, uh, Alison asked me um, yeah, to give some uh, recommendations regarding potential key actions. What can we do in the next months regarding uh, fall armyworm in, in the region? Next, please. Well, I started actually uh, working on the regulatory situation in uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, around 2008, when I joined um, or when I uh, cooperated with um, uh, uh, the FAO um, uh, in, in Bangkok. And um, during the, the project work, uh, when I joined the ASEAN Biocontrol Sustainable Agri-Foods uh, project, uh, I, uh, uh, we had a lot of exchange with uh, FAO uh, during that time on the regulatory situation as FAO was uh, doing an assessment of the uh, pesticide situation, that means all pesticides, um, including uh, biopesticides in the region uh, within this Asia-Pacific Plant Protection Commission platform. And um, uh, at the end of this cooperation, we had a, a joint publication, or FAO had a publication in 2013 on this uh, regulatory situation in Southeast Asia. And at that time, we uh, discussed that uh, uh, GRZ, together with uh, the ASEAN Working Group on Crops, would work uh, specifically on uh, ASEAN guidelines on the regulation, use, and trade of biocontrol agents. That was uh, between 2012 and 2014, which included that we uh, had a, an intensive dialogue with the various departments of agriculture and regulatory authorities um, of the ASEAN member states, uh, which culminated then uh, or concluded in 2014 with the publication of the guidelines on biocontrol agents, which was endorsed in 2014 by um, the so-called uh, senior officials meeting of the ASEAN ministers on agriculture and forestry short summer month. So these guidelines um, have been um, officially endorsed by um, the agricultural ministers of ASEAN member states. Next slide, please. So what are these ASEAN uh, guidelines uh, about? I just show you here on the left side, you see the, the front cover of the guidelines, um, this endorsed document by ASEAN, um, and you see also some links below there where you can download uh, this document. I will not go into details. You see also some country collaborators who are the authors of this document, um, uh, and maybe some of you are online today. Um, 
Um, the main goal and purpose of this document actually was to develop a regional framework for the regulation of biocontrol agents that um, facilitates more registrations nationally. Um, also, um, this guideline uh, contains an overview over the regulatory systems of ASEAN member states, uh, which I will not go into detail here, um, because that is uh, far beyond the scope of this presentation, but you can easily have a look in these guidelines and, and, and see the, the structure of the regulatory systems, which shouldn't have changed much since that time, but of course there will probably be some changes. And we wanted to provide a blueprint for harmonization of regulation uh, in a sense that we could stimulate the regional trade and exchange of these uh, plant protection products, or the biological plant protection products. And I have to point out that uh, the ASEAN guidelines on, on biocontrol agents was developed um, on the basis of following the, the OECD guidelines. Um, apart from regulation, um, a very important part of these guidelines is also uh, hands-on recommendations regarding the application of biocontrol, uh, biocontrol agents for sustainable agriculture of major crops. So we have uh, vegetables, we have rice, we have fruit crops in included, and we, we provide some, uh, some examples and guidance also for standalone application, not only um, a biocontrol in uh, combination with IPM, but uh, a standalone uh, approaches for controlling of major pests. Um, since 2015, some of the member states have um, included uh, parts of the regulation in their national uh, legislation. For instance, Thailand uh, has included uh, data waivers regarding biocontrol agents. Vietnam has uh, published the so-called Circular 21, which gives starter requirements for especially for, for biocontrol uh, products. Uh, Indonesia has uh, developed special data requirements and so on and so forth. Uh, so just to give you an example that, that uh, parts or um, some countries, for instance, like Laos, have taken over um, these guidance uh, uh, document and, uh, and, and, and implemented it in their national regulation. Thomas, we'll just have uh, to move a little bit quicker through the slides. To, yeah, to okay. To Thank you, next slide. Yeah, and this is just uh, to alert you that there is a, a database um, available uh, that was developed also during uh, this uh, uh, work uh, in, uh, with, with ASEAN, and uh, you can access this database uh, on biocontrol products, um, which is also uh, grouped into the product categories that, that Roma already uh, addressed earlier. Next slide, please. Um, if you look here on the left side, I've done a, a database search. What products are actually uh, registered uh, for control of all armyworm in the region? And if we um, consult the, the ASEAN bioinput database, there is actually no specific product uh, registered. Uh, but of course, uh, some of these data are already uh, quite old, but there are still products in this database uh, that are registered until 2022. So it's, it's still valid. Uh, I've also consulted the, the global uh, so-called homologa pesticide database, um, which um, is also operated, in, uh, operated from Germany. And uh, I also could not find a specific registration against fall armyworm in ASEAN member states. Um, although in both databases, there are products, for instance, uh, registered against armyworm that could be applied um, against fall armyworm also uh, in, in Asia. On the right side, um, I show you um, an overview over the, the major active ingredients of, uh, of four biopesticides um, and uh, natural products, uh, where I did the market research in 2015 together with my colleague. And uh, you can also see in this, um, in this list that there are certainly uh, some products uh, registered in the region that could be used against fall armyworm. Next slide, please. So a brief uh, mention of this STDF project, which um, has started already. This is coordinated by uh, Michael Braverman from Rutgers University in the US. And um, he's working together with the Asia Pacific Association for, of Agricultural Research Institutions. And um, this project aims, among other things, at improving technical 
uh, capacity among uh, partner countries in Asia for pesticide residue mitigation. And it also includes a component on regulatory harmonization for biopesticides in ASEAN, which is uh, scheduled for about July next year, 2021, uh, which I will take care of and um, which I will also prepare in the yeah, first half uh, next year, um, uh, starting, for instance, also with, again, uh, look at the current status of the regulatory system in the region. Um, so far to that, uh, uh, to that SDDF project, uh, we will certainly also announce uh, then later um, uh, in, in, the, uh, in the process uh, the exact dates of that regulatory harmonization uh, 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 workshop. Next slide, please. So at, at the end, um, what to do next? Um, I put down here some, some ideas uh, based on my experience now in, in the region. So the first thing, uh, if it comes to mobilizing also ASEAN uh, members, uh, it could be possibly uh, that we could reactivate and use the website and platform of um, ASEAN crops. Um, uh, which is a website uh, that was developed by ASEAN Sector Working Group on Crops and is now hosted by the DOA of Thailand. So uh, this also hosts the bioinput database I just mentioned before, and it could be uh, maybe used in the future to uh, make the case for, for fall armyworm. Uh, of course, we need to update the registered uh, and commercially available uh, biological plant protection products in, in the ASEAN region and in Asia as a whole. Uh, check which products work well, uh, uh, what are the national or international suppliers. Um, there are also foreign products available, uh, for instance, in Europe, um, and we heard before from the speakers uh, also from China, there are four uh, fall armyworm specific uh, products already available, for instance, in Europe, uh, quite uh, a good uh, baculovirus product. So uh, I think um, it will, will be worthwhile to check what is available. Um, with regard to the regulatory discussion, we need to engage in, in a cross-country discussion, and we hope to do that uh, again next year, um, in 2021, uh, to see um, if how we can uh, forward the registration of good quality products, be they foreign or local, and uh, how uh, potential registration barriers could be lowered. Um, it's very important uh, within the ASEAN context to remove registration barriers. There, there exist uh, certain registration barriers, I cannot go into detail, but especially, for instance, um, uh, similar chemicals. And as I heard the um, uh, the previous talk, um, I wish the same chemicals good luck, but we had um, a stony way um, uh, to get same chem chemicals registered in, in Southeast Asia. So uh, I, I feel this very important and a very important product group to look at if we uh, uh, look at fall armyworm. Um, it's also important that um, existing government extension systems um, uh, yeah, uh, look how they can integrate, expand, or improve the supply chains for biocontrols, biopesticides. Because, um, yes, we have uh, technologies available, and we heard also before there are technologies under development, but distributing them and selling them uh, is still another story. So it's, it's very important to, to develop the distribution system so that they actually can reach the farmer. And uh, this leads me to uh, my last points. Of course, we need to consider uh, farmers' needs and skills and the economic situation. And uh, many people asked already about the pricing. So the absolute price tag is not so important here. We need the, the application rates and we need to know the whole economic setting um, to judge whether um, uh, a technology can be successful. So this is very important and that needs uh, uh, um, research the ground on the economic situation of, of the farmers. And um, I also welcome, uh, as we heard in our uh, previous talks already, we need area-wide solutions. So for instance, pheromones or even the classical or uh, augmentative um, uh, biological control approaches over wide areas are certainly preferred over single farmer application because many pests are um, an area-wide problem and cannot be handled by, by single farmers. 
Thank you very much. This is my uh, excellent. Thank you so much, Thomas.